Hi, my name is Daniel Trevario. I am the Alternative Intersection Supervisor in the Office of Traffic Operations at GDOT. So Daniel, we always receive a lot of questions and a lot of comments about roundabouts. So basically, one of the things that people want to know is that do roundabouts actually accommodate for tractor trailers? Uh, a modern roundabout does, yes. Um, so nowadays, we design every roundabout to accommodate uh, a design vehicle, uh, which on uh, Georgia state routes is always going to be a semi-truck uh, tractor trailer. Um, so we have a software package which enables us to move these uh, tractor trailers around our designs. So they are sized, the circles are sized, uh, the lane widths and everything are sized to accommodate tr uh, tractor trailers. We also have that uh, concrete truck apron in the middle of the roundabout. That's there specifically for tractors to overtrack, uh, trailers to overtrack, sorry. Um, so the curb face on that is a little bit more mountable um, so that the uh, truck drivers don't have to mount the outside tr uh, curb, they can go over the truck apron on the inside. Okay. Um, so a lot of people feel like some of our roundabouts are too small. Um, is there like a particular way that you all look at it? Like, okay, you know, we're going to make this one larger than the other one, or what is actually the process with that? Um, there's lots of factors that go into deciding the size, to be honest. Um, a lot of our small ones right now are actually temporary. Uh, so we have 10 or so mini roundabouts, which are the fully traversable um, central islands. There are no landscaping, no landscaping in the middle of those. Um, a lot of those are actually temporary. They've been put in reasonably quickly and reasonably cheaply. Um, they were determined by right-of-way and cost primarily. Um, so it's, of course, a lot cheaper to put them in if you don't have to buy right-of-way. Um, so those ones are just there until a full-blown, more conventional size roundabout can go in afterwards. Uh, but generally speaking, we use, we use trucks uh, and then we use the number of lanes um, and those kind of things to determine how big it needs to be. Okay. Um, so some people feel that roundabouts actually cause more accidents as opposed to a four-way signal or four-way stop. Like those statistics, I see that roundabouts are actually safer. So what are, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. There's a, nowadays a lot of national research. Um, there's always research going on all the time, but uh, roundabouts have been around in the U.S. for quite some time now, so we do have quite a library of research projects across a lot of different states that show that. They show a significant reduction in, in crashes, specifically severe crashes, so they're the ones that um, result in injuries and fatalities. Uh, and we've actually been reviewing our own roundabouts in Georgia, uh, and that's an ongoing process, of course, because we're installing more and more every month. Um, but so far we've seen the same the same thing, the same trend, uh, a good reduction in, in severe crashes specifically. Okay, so then that would cater into my question of why is GDOT building more roundabouts and it's like, okay, so they're more cost efficient, they're safer, um, they're actually friendly for tractor trailers. Are there any other points that why GDOT is actually building roundabouts? Uh, yeah, we, we, um, we reasonably recently revised the mission statement uh, for GDOT and um, one of the words in that mission statement is safety, and, in, and the other one is innovation, actually. Uh, so every time that we look at an intersection, we're always evaluating a series of different intersection types, uh, and we look at a bunch of different things, cost, of course, uh, safety, uh, congestion relief, delay relief, um, that kind of thing. Um, so we've already talked about the safety of roundabouts, but they can actually be uh, operationally beneficial too. Um, so depending on where they're put, um, but they can also have um, a nice uh, effect on communities. You can, you can do some very nice landscaping in the middle. They can be quite nice gateway uh, enhancement um, installations as well. Okay. Um, and with the roundabouts to kind of be implemented more, what is GDI actually doing to educate the public on how to actually use them? So that's also a continuing, um, a continuing thing that we're working on. Um, we have these public information open houses for projects with roundabouts on them. Uh, and there's always informational materials available there, so brochures, posters. Uh, you can see these simulations being developed more and more nowadays too, uh, that show vehicles actually driving through the design, uh, so people that attend these meetings can see uh, roughly what it'll end up looking like. Um, there's information in the DDS uh, driver's manual, uh, and we, we were involved uh, in years past in assisting them with revising that. Um, and we also have a roundabouts webpage. It's, a, it's on the GDOT webpage. Uh, and that has a series of, of links to informational materials, um, a map of some of our existing roundabouts, uh, and some uh, YouTube how to drive type videos as well. Okay, all right. And so a couple more things. Um, are roundabouts actually friendly for bicyclists and pedestrians? Yes, absolutely. We get that question a lot as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
So one of the main features of a roundabout is the slow speed environment. Um, if it's designed well, then it, it'll be a slow speed environment, uh, which lends itself to being beneficial for everybody, motorists and uh, pedestrians and bicyclists. Um, when a pedestrian crosses a roundabout, they only have to look in one direction at a time because they have that splitter island that they can use as a refuge. Uh, for bicyclists, uh, if it's a multi-lane roundabout, um, we will always be putting a shared use path around the circle so that they don't have to go through uh, with the traffic. Um, but for single lane roundabouts, um, we follow the federal direction, which is to allow bicyclists to just share the road with, with motorists. Uh, but again, because it's a slow speed environment, the risk of a severe collision or a collision at all is, is significantly reduced. Um, so. Okay, so last question is, what are like some good tips to give motorists or whoever that actually uses a roundabout? Do you have any good tips of how to navigate it? Yes, absolutely. So this, this, gets, this comes up a lot, actually. And the main thing I always tell people is the people in the circle have the right of way. Uh, that is pretty much the main operating rule for a roundabout. So if you're approaching a roundabout, always look left, always check to see if someone's in the circle. Um, and if it looks like they're going to come in front of you, always yield to them. They have the right of way. If you're in the circle, do not stop for people entering. Um, other than that, um, make sure that you choose the correct lane before you get to the circle for multi-lane roundabouts. Uh, modern roundabouts are designed so that you choose your lane before you get to the circle. Um, you shouldn't need to change lanes in the circle. That just runs the risk of, of collisions. Uh, so just choose the lane that you want beforehand, follow the signs, and then uh, stay in that lane. All right. Well, thanks so much, Nate. I think uh, this is going to educate the public greatly on the use of roundabouts. So thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome.